Hello, this is Russ and Kitty Walden, and this is a special report from Father's Heart Ministry to our friends, supporters, viewers, and listeners of the Morning Light Daily Bible Study. In recent days, the COVID-19 situation has captured the attention of the world and caused concern in every sector of our society. In times like these, our faith is vitally important, and it is also essential to be armed with the facts. For everything that's being reported in the news and by our governments, there is much that is not reported. Now, we're not talking about information gleaned in some clandestine way, but information that is readily available to the public if they would just take the time to arm themselves with accurate information rather than the spin other sources put on what's going on around us. Now, one crucial example of this is a CDC report on a similar pandemic that most people don't didn't even realize was taking place at the time. Uh, let me give some context. What would you think if tomorrow morning you woke up to discover in the United States overnight there had been 60 million infections, 275,000 hospitalizations, and over 12,000 deaths? Imagine, imagine in the current climate, the level of panic and the level of alarm that would create. Yet, it has already happened, and most people don't even remember it. I'm talking about the H1N1 pandemic in 2009. These were the statistics reported by the WHO and the CDC in the U.S. alone. 60 million infections. 275,000 hospitalizations and 12,000 deaths in 2009. All of this, much, much worse than COVID-19 today, yet even at the time, in 2009, there was no panic, no empty grocery shelves, no market crash, no canceled flights or travel restrictions. You have to ask yourself, what's happening here? As of yesterday, March 14th, in the U.S., there have only been 1,675 infections and 41 deaths. What's the difference? In 2009, in the United States, now listen, one in five Americans were hospitalized with H1N1. Still, there was no suggestion that hospitals were being overrun. No mention of that in 09. Where were the news reports? The entirety of the H1N1 pandemic in 2009 was barely a footnote on the network news. It is time to arm yourselves with the facts. What do we con to conclude regarding all of this? Now look, in keeping with the character of the Morning Light Bible Study and Father's Heart Ministry, many surmisings could be made from vague generalizations to outright skullduggery and murky clandestine plots, etc., etc. Father's Heart Ministry does not exist to promulgate such fanciful, paranoid ideas. What we are here to do is to speak the truth. The facts stated thus far, the statistics did not come from a right-wing news agency, a journalist, or any politically charged resource. The facts and figures herein cited are direct from the apolitical data gathering of the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control. The facts, not the rumor of COVID-19, Compared with the H1N pandemic of 2009, by contrast, COVID is entirely minuscule. But look at what is happening now and what did not happen in 2009. 
any level-minded person capable of independent thought can only conclude that what borders on mass hysteria in the Western world, it might be real and actually taking place, but it does not take into consideration much worse pandemics in recent years that did not even remotely generate the kind of terror, outright terror, that we see around us today. What is causing all of this? Is it just a perfect storm of events and timing? In course, taking place in an election year? Well, that would be preferable to thinking the unthinkable, the unthinkable consideration that political operatives and powers that be in our culture actually want to create this kind of situation for their own disreputable ends. When you compare how various news organizations are reporting these events between network and network, the inconsistencies couldn't be greater. Who do we trust? Where can we find the truth? The one overarching conclusion that you can make in all of this is the fact of the inconsistent, negligent, poison-laced narratives of the news organizations and other resources for whom the truth, rather than being top priority, is just a lesser line item in a long list of self-driven ag agendas. Now, where is the truth then? Where is our dependency to be as believers? In John 14, 12, Jesus told his followers, he said, I, 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Let me tell you something. You're not going to the Father by COVID-19. If you go to the Father, you're going to the Father by Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen, our truth as believers is not something reported on the news. Our truth is a person and his name is Jesus. In Luke 21, 26, Jesus speaks of men's hearts. Now listen, failing them for fear of what they see coming upon the earth. Now we know that fear comes not from God. Where does fear come from? It comes from Satan. In scripture, we see Satan as a serpent working to beguile the faithful. Look at Acts 16, 16. There's a woman there possessed with the spirit of divination who followed Paul. Did you know that the word divination is the Greek word pythos? This is where we get the word python. Stick with me now and remember what Jesus said, men's hearts failing them for fear. Pythons are constricting serpents who kill not with venom, but by squeezing their victims, not till they suffocate, but till their hearts stop. That's how a constricting serpent kills. He doesn't suffocate you. He squeezes you till your heart stops. So what Jesus describes in Luke, men's hearts failing them for fear, is the ascendancy of a python spirit. That is the principality and the power that is holding the entire world in its grip right now the spirit of Python. As a result, what is happening? And you have to understand, if you look at what the woman possessed with the spirit of divination did in Philippi in Acts 16, she, she was, her medium was a message. She was a messenger. She brought a narrative. And as a result, what's happening today? Because of the ascendancy of the spirit of Python, what did the damsel with the spirit of Python want to do? She wanted to stop Paul. And if you study the chapter, you'll see that's what she was working at and the spirit working in her. What do we see happening today? The python, when he attacks its victim, he stops their heart. Today we look around us and everything is stopping. The economic heart of the business sector is stopping. Governments are stopping. Churches are stopping. And on it goes. Now, how do we gain an understanding of all this? We have to go to the Word of God. Remember the words of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Now let's read it. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any 
two-edged sword. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, and what does it do? Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Listen, the Word of God clearly exposes the spirit behind this pandemic of fear as the spirit of Python, and Python manifests as it did with Paul in Acts 16 as a spirit of divination, a spirit of false prophecy. Listen, right now, if you look at the top Christian books being sold in Amazon right now, the number one book is by a woman, I believe the name is Sylvia Brown, who never construed herself even to be a Christian, but was an overt psychic and clairvoyant. And it's the number one book being sold in the Christian book category on Amazon because she predicted by a spirit of divination things that are happening right now. The spirit of Python has wrapped its tentacles around the church of the living God, as well as these other sectors of society. In Paul's day, the damsel possessed with the spirit of divination operated out of the cave at Delphi. Today, the spirit of divination is operating from the altar of the newscasts viewed in every home in the Western world. My counsel to you is that you shake yourself and you wake yourself from the mesmerism of the narrative of the world and return to the rock of Christ from whence you sprang and put your trust and keep your trust in him during these trying times. Why is fear running so unchecked in our society today? Now let's remember are we more susceptible to fear than we were in 2009? Let's remember the words of David in Psalm 19.9. In Psalm 19.9, David made a statement. He said, the fear of the Lord, it is something. What is it? The fear of the Lord, David said, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So, the fear of the Lord is clean. If the fear of the Lord is clean then the fear of anything else is unclean. If you are afraid, you are dealing with an unclean spirit. That is why right now the world has no defense against the fear that is running rampant in our streets. Think about the uncleanness, the debauchery, the perversion, the lust, the unbelief, the depravity, and the wantonness that characterizes the world and society around us. In the last few decades, the nations of the West have completely cast aside their moral compass, they have abandoned their moorings, and as a result, they've been foaming out their shame, all the while shaking their fist in God's face. Thus, in their uncleanness, when fear comes, they have no defense. What about you? Are you afraid? Fear is tantamount. So the scripture says the wicked flee when none pursueth. Fear is tantamount to spiritual pornography. Did you hear what I said? Fear is tantamount to spiritual pornography. You would not look at pornography to titillate your flesh. Why would you immerse yourself in the spiritual pornography of fear all around us. What's the answer? There are 365 scriptures about fear in the Bible, one for every day of the year. Let's consider just a few. In 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you are afraid, it is not just an emotional condition. You are commiserating, you are communing with a demonic spirit. Are you listening? Romans chapter 8, 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 
1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Are you tormented? Check up on your love life. He that fears is not made perfect in love. In Genesis 15, verse 1, the Lord came to Abram in a vision. And listen, what he said to Abram, he says to you and I today, Fear not, for I am your shield. I am your inoculation. I am your vaccine. I am your shield, and I am your exceeding great reward. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. Be not afraid of them, of H1N1, of COVID-19, etc., etc. For the Lord your God, he it is that goes with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. Isaiah 7, 4. Say unto him, take heed, be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted. Isaiah 35, 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God comes with vengeance, even with recompense. He will come and save you. Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Let us remember the words of Jesus in Luke 10, Luke 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give you power. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Listen, Python is a serpent. You've been given power over serpents. Python is running unchecked through the earth right now. But Jesus has given you the power to put your foot on the serpent's head. And nothing, not COVID-19, not H1N1, shall by any means hurt you. H1N1 shall not hurt you. COVID-19 shall not hurt you by any means. So how do you arm yourself? In our prayer regimen, Kitty and I for years have made faith declarations, and we make many. We have quite a few that we go through uh, every day in our prayer time. But here's just a salient portion that applies to our health. We get in our prayer time, we have our prayer time, and we pray. We declare that our bodies, you could pray this with me, our bodies function in the perfection that God created to function. Just repeat that with me. My body functions the perfection that God created to function. In Jesus' name, go ahead, say this with me. In Jesus' name, we forbid our bodies to be deceived by any virus or disease germ. Every virus or disease germ that touches our bodies dies instantly in the name of Jesus. We are strong and in good health. Our immune systems grow stronger day by day. We speak life to our immune systems and we forbid confusion in our immune systems in any way. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens our mortal bodies with the life and resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every cell of our bodies supports life and health abundantly. We, you and I, we are not weak. Neither are we sickly, and we will not die before our time. The life of God flows in our veins, quickening every cell of our body with life, with health, and vitality to ward off every virus, every aberrant condition, H1N1, COVID-19, anything contrary to the perfect, vital, and vibrant health that the Lord Jesus went to the cross to make available, we claim that. Claim that with me, that we claim all the benefits of Calvary for our health and healing are 100% manifest in our bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Now, is there anything else we need to know or to do? Yes. 
used wisdom. When Jesus came into your heart, he did not cut your head off. Safeguard your person. Safeguard your loved ones. Take measured common sense steps to limit exposure, as you would with any flu season. But keep your eyes on Christ and know that you are under God's loving and protective care. God bless you. The regular morning light Bible study will commence tomorrow. Blessings.